Twitter recently removed a tweet from White House Coronavirus Task Force members Dr. Scott Atlas that questioned the effectiveness of wearing masks. According to Twitter, that post violated sharing false or misleading content related to COVID-19. Joining us with his reaction to Twitter removing his post is Dr. Scott Atlas himself. Dr. Atlas, good morning. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. Dr. Atlas, before we get to the Twitter controversy, I just want to read a tweet that you just sent down about 36 minutes ago, and I'm quoting you now, sir. History will judge today's faces of public health and their media friends harshly. The only solution, vote like your life depends on it. The county, the country, the world is all at stake. Sir, could you, uh, can we start our conversation there? That's a pretty powerful tweet. Well, uh, you know, that's the reality we're living in here. Uh, you know, we, we've had a policy here that has been pushed by uh, the most visible faces of, of, of policy for the pandemic now. Uh, and their, their policy is stopping COVID-19 at all costs. And uh, that means via things like testing asymptomatic healthy people who have extremely low risk and when they're tested positive, confine them, isolate them for 14 days, which, of course, destroys the workforce, destroys their lives. Uh, You know, is stopping in-person schools, which is enormously harmful to our children, not just for learning, but for things uh, far more important, like uh, their mental health, uh, devastating to families uh, who have their businesses and their investments shut down. And that's just uh, that's a disaster that that policy that is pushed by those people uh, is killing people. It's not just killing people because half of cancers are not being diagnosed, even though they're present. And that means those people will be coming into the hospital with more advanced disease. Many will die. It's not just because people refuse to come in. It's the fear that was instilled. It's not just shutting medical facility. It's the fear, and the fear has prevented people from seeking medical care, from getting immunized, from getting cancer screenings. There are massive poverty consequences where there's the UN projects 130 million people are going into abject starvation level poverty around the world. 400,000 people will now die of tuberculosis because of diversion of resources. Uh, from things like that. Malaria program in Africa was devastated. The people that pushed those policies were completely wrong. They have killed perhaps hundreds of thousands or more people, uh, and they keep pushing this policy. And they I don't know if it's a combination of just complete denial of science uh, as well as simply hubris, ego, it can't admit they're wrong, Their stature depends on their continued visibility in the public narrative. And when people like me, who show contrary science, who actually look at the data and then analyze it uh, with the world's best epidemiologists from Harvard, Stanford, Oxford, people all over the world, and when when I say those facts, because they are against that narrative, because they are against what, what the media and, and the public have bought into partly out of fear and partly out of perhaps other motivations like an election year. That, that sort of thing is unconscionable. It is heinous. Uh, and to censor people like me uh, who are putting forward facts, none of which were incorrect in the tweet that was deleted, zero. In fact, I quoted directly from the sources. I didn't even make up my own words. I gave the evidence And that censorship is now, to me, by far the biggest threat to freedom in the United States and probably the world. And I think people better take it very, very seriously because this country is finished if we are going to live in a world where 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 counter narrative facts are suppressed, canceled, and made invisible. Well, you you bring it up, sir. We'll, we'll throw up the tweet that, uh, that Twitter took down, and it had to do with masks, and your quote, you were quoting uh, the CDC. We have it up now. When you hit the tweet button on this, did you think there was going to be the blowback that there was? No, uh, because, uh, you know, the reality is that I'm talking about in that tweet, first of all, everything has its context. I'm talking about 
mask mandates and universal mask wearing. And I stand by that completely because I'm giving the facts. There is no argument against that because I'm giving the facts. The facts are that places like L.A. County, Miami-Dade County, Hawaii, the Philippines, Spain, uh, the U.K., France, Israel, all over the world that have had masks in place with general population mandates to wear masks, the cases have exploded through those for months. If you look at the quotes that I put on there, I mean, you're not going to get a more a person more expert level than Professor Hennigan of the University of Oxford, who's the director of the Center for Evidence-Based Medicine and the editor-in-chief of British Medical Journal's Evidence-Based Medicine. And his quote is, it would appear that despite two decades of pandemic preparedness, there is considerable uncertainty as to the value of wearing masks. We're talking about universal masks here. The WHO, that's a quote there is that mass widespread use is not supported by high quality or direct evidence and there are potential harms and they list the dozens of harms and you know this, this is not i mean i don't even know why that's controversial to say what expert websites uh say i mean the cdc study that they published in may 2020 specifically looked at the role of mass in uh, widespread use for influenza, which is a somewhat similar uh, contagion, that's obvious, and they don't work for widespread use. Now, I did also put in the context that when you are in close proximity to somebody and you cannot social distance and you are at high risk uh, or, you know, they, or they're at high risk, that's appropriate to wear a mask. That's the policy of the president. That's the policy I personally advised the president to have. That's a rational policy. That's why, uh, for instance, we as doctors, when we're doing procedures, use a mask. It's to prevent yourself from coughing into a sterile wound or into a sterile space. It's not to stop you from breathing. That is not the purpose of a mask. This You don't even have to be a doctor to understand. You have to be a rational person that's not obsessed and consumed with fear. And I think, again, it brings me back to the main point here. The failure of the public policy so-called experts with their counting of cases and their, their own obsessions with testing, the failure of them is they, in, they, out of their own ignorance and ego, but were disregarding the rest of the uh, impact of the policy, they have instilled fear into people. They're, they're, our, our world, our country particularly, is off the rails because there is a hysteria going on that is paralyzing rational thought. And now, when you say that, you are canceled, you are censored. This is very, very dangerous. And I, and I think we're at the place right now where we have to realize, as a people, the only way to stop this is from the people side. It's not going to be stopped at the expert level. It's not going to be stopped by the government. You must vote and just express yourself. This is now an issue that is a threat to the entire future of the United States. Lastly, sir, what is your working relationship with Dr. Fauci and Dr. Birx? Do you guys see each other on a day-to-day -day basis? Do you hammer this out or or are you in separate corners and never see one another? Yeah, listen, I'm not going to comment on the day-to-day -day workings of what I do. And, and I'm not really interested in, in that sort of stuff. I'm not here because I'm trying to make friends with people. I've said this before. Uh, I don't have um, friends in the media that I leak information about somebody and distort things because I'm not insecure about my position. I'm not worried if I'm in the public face. My credibility, my, my, uh, my own self-worth is not determined by what CNN says about me, frankly. And, um, you know, I don't know how to say it anymore, but that stuff is just uh, beneath me, frankly, to start talking about people like Dr. Burks or Dr. Fauci. Yeah, they have their own views. Uh, you know, I, I, I think that the, they, they will, everybody will be held accountable, frankly, in the public sphere, uh, and history will record what people did and said out of their own ego, insecurity, and complete ignorance. Dr. Scott Atlas, uh, I, I remember a time when we were very trepid, 
reaching out to you, and you've been so generous with KUSI, and that you continue to be so, even at, with this now high-ranking position, we, uh, we certainly appreciate your generosity, sir. Well, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Have a safe day. Okay, good luck to the people in San Diego. <laughs> well, I'll send it along. Thank you, sir. Uh, San Diego County is awaiting new data from the state.